Hi everyone, Adam Steele here, and today we're going to be talking about MIDI and a very new little gadget called the Futurist. Now, if you've ever used MIDI in the past, it can be confusing, and traditionally, if you wanted to control MIDI on a live stage, you needed a huge controller board. Like, here's one that I use that, that is also an effects pedal. I used to have a kind of a Behringer equivalent that's about this size, and... Well, that is all well and good if everything is in a rack at the back of the stage, but a lot of the time, that's not the case anymore. A lot of guitarists will have a lot of pedals on a pedal board that can have MIDI functionality that can do really cool stuff. And they can also have MIDI gear at the back, like this amp here, we can change the channels via MIDI. Uh, but you don't want to take up all of this huge space. So, introducing the Matthews FX Futurist. This thing is tiny and incredibly powerful. So today in this video brought to you by Matthews FX, we're going to be looking at exactly how to use this, uh, treat this like an online manual if you will, and we're going to go through exactly what this thing can do and how to make it dance. So despite this thing's tiny little frame, you can add things onto it to make it bigger, but there are so many possibilities with that, that I'll go through that bit by bit as we go through this whole video. This video is gonna be a little bit long, but like I said, this is kind of like a, an online manual of how to actually use this thing and what it's capable of. So what is this? It's a MIDI controller with four buttons, and two of the buttons at the back are actually higher up than the front two, so that if you're playing this tiny little thing with your feet, you should actually be quite easily able to press them separately and not mash your foot on all the separate ones. You can control everything that this thing can do via just these four buttons. It does make you go a little cross-eyed at times, but there's also uh, an app for Mac and PC where you can do everything with a keyboard and mouse and do it you know, much quicker but let's say you're stuck, you're on stage in between two sets and you want to change one little thing, you can do that without having to plug it into anything. Speaking of plugging it into anything, let's talk about the connections on it. Right now, I'm powering this off a standard 9 volt uh, power connection, just like any other effects pedal. So it will go on any isolated output of any power supply. But also, it has a USB connection at the top, and it can be powered via USB instead. So if you're using this in some of the configurations we'll talk about later, using this with a computer, then you don't need the separate power supply. The PC can, or Mac, can just power it. Beyond that, we have a regular DIN MIDI connection. That's the old five pin MIDI connection. Although MIDI only really uses three of those pins, uh, but that's kind of the standard connection shape. So there's one on here. This can be used as a MIDI output, but it can also be used as a MIDI input. So if you've got anything else that sends MIDI signals, you can use that to send that in here. Now, why would you do that? Ah, well, next to that, there are two tiny little mini jacks, three and a half mil mini jacks that are MIDI in and out as well. This isn't the usual standard, but it's becoming more and more common these days. I know that a lot of the Boss pedals, like the DD200 and that whole 200 range, they have the 3.5mm jacks, which means that on a pedal board, as a really good example, you're not taking up all this space here with the jack. You just get a tiny little 3.5mm, and, and then there's no extra vertical space taken, and that means that this could fit even smaller on a board and connect more easily without adapters. Having said the word adapters, you can get three and a half mil to regular MIDI jack connectors so that you can then convert this into an extra MIDI in and out that work in parallel with the main MIDI out. On the sides, this is where it gets really clever. On this side, we have a control input, which can have an extra extension, which I don't have here, that has an extra three buttons on it, which means that suddenly you've got a lot more buttons to push if that's what you need. Or you can plug in an expression pedal, 
which means that you can then control things like MIDI for volume, MIDI for adjusting gain, MIDI for, you know, MIDI wah, that kind of, anything you can imagine that you would want to do with a, a rocker pedal, um, you can then plug an expression pedal in this side. On the other side, another really cool thing is what they call the utility output. Now the utility output can do things like it can switch uh, channels on an amp, it can switch reverb on an amp on and off if your amp supports that, not with MIDI, just with a relay switch. Or it can do the old school tap tempo thing from here. Very clever. And again, we'll talk about all this in the next few minutes. I'll dive into each one of these points one by one. Now, let's start off by talking about some of the more straightforward MIDI features. MIDI can be a little bit of a minefield, but my general advice is whatever you are working on, find the manual for that piece of equipment. And usually there's a big table in there of this control does this, this control does that, this control does this, and so on and so on and so on. And this Rev amp is a really good example of something that can use both program changes and control changes, also known as PC messages and CC messages. Now PC messages are what we often think of as presets. If you've got something like an Axe FX or a Kemper or a Helix or even a Rev or anything that has presets and has a MIDI input, usually if you send the program change message with a number, then that preset number gets called up as soon as you hit that command. So what we can do with the Rev is we can have presets in here and I've gone ahead and created a preset that is channel two with a couple of the buttons and the way that I did that for this particular amp is you hold down the store button, then you press the right preset number on what you've programmed and that gets stored. So let's just show you that now. I'm gonna just call up, let's say the purple channel with the gate and the fat switch. Now, if I go and make myself a new setup on the pedal, I'll click on one of these empty setups right here and you'll see the light has come on next to empty. So if I press, let's turn off the guitar volume, press these two buttons down, that gives me a menu. Bank one, program four, because this goes one, two, three, four in a little circle. And so we want to send a patch message. So we hit enter edit message one because you can send up to 16 messages all in one big go. Uh, right now we're gonna make this simple. Right now we're gonna make this simple and just send one. But if you've got lots of gear and you want to change it all at once, we'll come back to that. So edit message one, yes. So message empty. So we've changed left and right, changed the type to be a PC message. Program change, enter, send on channel one, because this amp is currently set to listen on channel one. This is another thing that gets clever later. So I'll hit enter, and then PC number. So if I hit store on this amp, so that's now flashing over there. Let's say that we do this as preset number four. So I'll hit enter, don't save to custom, and that's done. So now, if I go out of here, the name is still empty. But now I've hit that preset once. I need to change the name of this later. It says empty right now, but preset four up here is what we just made. Now, if I hit this button, this is a completely different preset that I made earlier, which is on the green channel, which sounds like this. And then I can use this button, what we've programmed, to bring in the purple channel with the gate. Very different sound, much louder of course. But yeah, that's one of the things you can do. So with anything like this amp or any digital stuff, like if you've got a digital, any digital pedal that's got 
presets, anything that's got presets really, if it's got MIDI in, there's a very good chance that a program change message will call up those presets. So you will then look in the manual to find, okay, so preset one is preset this. Quite often, something to be aware of. The, um, the numbers sometimes don't match up. That's MIDI for you. MIDI doesn't start on number one. MIDI starts on number zero. So you might find, depending on your piece of equipment, if your pedal or piece of equipment with presets has a preset zero, then chances are preset change zero, program change zero on the Futurist will trigger exactly that. If your piece of equipment only has from preset number one, you might find that program change zero calls up preset one. So just keep that in mind so that then any program change that you want to call is one number off. Just keep that in mind when you're programming all this in. Now the next thing to talk about after program changes is control changes. Uh, these are where we can really get clever because a control change or a CC message as they're usually known can change any aspect of anything in MIDI as long as that piece of equipment is designed to accept the change. Uh, you'll often see things like a, a volume swell in MIDI is a CC and traditional MIDI messages all go from zero to 127, which is a big spectrum of 128 different values. Now you can use these in two different ways. You can use CC messages as that zero to 127, more or less big sweep, or you can use it like an on and off button where usually zero is off and 127 is on. Uh, or you can do it so that there are ranges, that also works. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to try using this rev, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna have the two master volumes on here, which can be changed with a CC message. So we're gonna load up this preset, which has nothing on it right now. We're going to edit it by pressing the two buttons and we're going to add in a patch message. Gonna add message one, and that's going to be a CC this time. Send on channel one because our amp is on channel one. And having looked at the manual, the CC value we want is number 27. Again, check, check your manuals for all your equipment because quite often a lot of this stuff is hard coded. Some equipment like Axe Effects is a good example. You can change a lot of these internally. Although why you would, I don't know. It makes things confusing. Uh, so we hit enter and CC value two is, uh, we want to make this, we want to make it above 63. There we go. The first value is the number of the CC message. So it's which message you're sending. The second number there was what number are we going to give? So if we say number 27, which in this case means change the master volume from master one to master two, and then we've gone above the threshold there of there was, I think number 63 is the cutoff. So now what's gonna happen is I back out of this, I'm gonna play, and this, when I hit this, and when I hit this button, it's gonna get significantly louder. because that engaged master volume number two, as we programmed it to do, we told it to do that. So you can have, say you could have two buttons that flip flop between master volume one, master volume two. You can do things with this amp, like turning on and off the reverb and the gates and the channels, all that kind of stuff. Uh, with uh, FX pedals, you can change a lot of different things. You can have uh, a wah remotely controlled. You can change drive settings, delay sends, all sorts of wonderful stuff with those. Next handy little feature is note on and note off, which are exactly what they sound like because MIDI, if you've ever seen it with a keyboard, every time you hit a key, that's a note on. You release that note, that's a note off. That's how piano style stuff works over MIDI. So what would we want a note on for here? It's not big enough to play a full symphony on, but that doesn't matter. What you can do here, I've found, is that you can do things like with a note on, I can trigger uh, a sample. 
So if I've got one or two samples that I need to trigger during a show, I can do it with my feet without having to have an extra keyboard, without having to take my hands off the fretboard. You know, I can, I can do things, just a, a quick cheeky little trigger at the same time as doing everything else. Now, you might not want to do all of these things all at the same time, but the option is there. I mean, I could have this, I could have one patch because of the, the multiple messages. I could trigger a sample at the same time as changing my guitar preset, at the same time as changing something on a delay pedal maybe, and just press one button and off we go. Very clever. Here's a nifty little feature for you. Um, this is not MIDI, this is just analog. Uh, the, this is a good example. This is a good old Boss DD7. Trusty, reliable delay uh, that does have a tempo input. So it's got a tap tempo input. Now, I could hook that up to a good old meat and potatoes, click, 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 click kind of switch. Or, if I know exactly what BPM we're going to use, I can use the Futurist and it will tap that exactly for me. Brilliant. So what we do is we find uh, an empty patch or add this to a pre-existing patch. Uh, we go into our menu and go into patch messages, enter. And then beyond the messages is uh, utility jack. So here I can hit yes, utility settings on. And then if I go to output type, there is switch change, which we'll come to in a minute. And there is tap pulse. And I can tell it exactly what BPM that's gonna be. So let's say 120, hit okay. And now when we go out of here, if I activate this, you might have noticed the green light on the DD7 came on. And that now has sent uh, pulses out to the DD7 at exactly <laughs> There we go, if I use the right delay time. 120 BPM right there. So if you've got parts of your song where you know there's an exact tempo coming up, you can add that in to a change. So you can have the same delay unit and without having to use the MIDI, the MIDI can be the other stuff, you can then change the tempo of that device. But not kind of ham-fistedly kind of getting there. If your drummer is playing to a click, say, you can guaranteed get the absolute right tempo with analog gear. Now, I have this lovely Victory Sheriff amp, which is an all analog amp, no MIDI, and using the Futurist, I can go from this to this. Now, how did I do that? Well, um, the control jack, as well as being used for tap tempo, can be a latching switch, which is very common in guitar amps, where the channel switch, or sometimes a reverb switch, if that's what you prefer, is literally just a, a connection that needs to be closed. So to do that, I needed to do a couple of things. Firstly, I had to go into the global settings and make sure uh, so if I go into menu, left to global options, I had to go to utility jack settings and go to the mode. And momentary is when you touch something, which is like a tap tempo, but latching is when it's permanently on or permanently open, depending on what you press. So I made sure this was on latching mode. And then in our little patch here, I went into the menu for it. So patch messages, as we've been doing before, but then went to utility jack. This time, utility settings on, type switch change, trigger both, because this particular amp seems to need both, but there's the tip and the ring separately. You can choose to be on or off, which some amps use the same TRS cable to trigger a, a channel switch and something like a reverb switch and then switch on. Once that's all saved, now this patch goes from with it uh, at channel one to channel two. 
and pressing the same button again does the opposite thing. So there's another potential option for you. Now, what if I want to have more than one thing controlled by the same futurist, but I don't want them all to change at the same time necessarily, because that could be a huge pain. Well, what you would do is you'd have a MIDI cable from here going to the first piece of equipment you have into its MIDI in, and hopefully that has a MIDI out or MIDI through. If there's two, you choose the MIDI through and then send that to the next piece of equipment, next piece of equipment, next piece of equipment. And that same signal should then go through all of your MIDI enabled devices. But that's where MIDI channels come in. So you would set each piece of your equipment to listen on a different MIDI channel. So in this case, I would set, say this old Korg unit that I have, I would set this to listen on channel two, I would set the rev to listen on channel one. Uh, I would set the next piece of gear to listen on channel three, channel four, and so on. And then all I have to do, and to do that, look in the manual for each piece of equipment. There's usually some sort of menu function to do this. Some pieces of gear have dip switches on the back, uh, but usually it's a menu thing. Uh, with the rev, particularly when you turn it on, you hold down a particular button and you send a command on the MIDI channel you want, and it will remember that. So then when you've got your preset on here, you can add patch messages like we've done up to 16 different messages. But the first thing it asks when you do edit message is message empty and then type, 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 manual, and then there's cust custom slots, which we'll come back to shortly. So let's say PC, send on channel. Let's say I wanted to change the preset on this whilst routing it through the rev, but not change the rev. I would send this on channel two, and then whatever the patch change number would be that I wanted to change the patch on this. And then save to custom, I'll talk about now. If you find that you've got different banks of presets for the Futurist, but you're using the same switches every time, uh, apart from a few specifics, you can save them to a custom button. And then what that does when you're making new patches means that you don't have to remember exactly what the you know, program change or CC change was for a particular thing. Let's say you've got change channel on the amp to this. That's fairly standard. So what I might do here, if we were changing the rev is go to edit message one, type patch change channel one for this amp, uh, patch change number. Let's say I'm using preset 11 a lot. Save to custom, I'm going to save that to slot one. Uh, and then edit name, save, and then edit the letters. This can take forever, which is again, why I would highly recommend doing this on the PC, which is why we're gonna do this next. But let's, let's call it R. Edit name, save. Name, save, enter. Now, if we go to edit message one, we can go to custom slot one, which is now named R. <laughs> the custom slots, I could have named that uh, rev channel three, uh, or I could name that, you know, a particular thing that I'm gonna use quite often so that when I'm referring back to it, they're all stored there for me so I know what I'm looking at. Um, quite often when you're doing this in the field, you don't have the manuals to hand. Googling is a real pain whilst you're in the middle of a show. So having these custom slots available is really useful. I mean, this is the kind of stuff that all being well, you wouldn't really do during the show, but having the option there is useful because as I can attest, when you play live shows, sometimes something needs changing that's a bit weird. You've got five minutes in between songs while the you know singer does his acoustic thing or while the drum solo's going on or while there's a break. And being able to quickly get in and change things <laughs> means that you can fix issues that you didn't know you had mid-show and carry on and no one ever knew the difference. Another thing you can do is you can have an expression jack. So I can plug in this cheap expression jack that I've here, got here. If you've got a really nice one, by all means use your really nice one. Uh, but an expression jack uh, does 
the thing of going from minimum to maximum and this can translate it so you could use it like a, a wah you can use it for volume boost you can use it for whatever you would possibly like so in our messages that we've got on a particular patch we go to expression uh, we tell it what midi channel we want that to go out on so in my case if i was uh, adjusting my old pedal board and not the rev that would be channel two enter uh, number of the CC, which uh, let's say, I don't know, 27. And that's done. And then when we're in this particular thing, now if I move this, that is going to translate and send MIDI messages all the way through the range of this out to the other gear, which means that if that's got something like a MIDI wire or a volume control or whatever it is, that's going to send it out. So, all this is really good, but it can take forever to do. So now it's time to turn around and show you how you can speed all this up with a PC and actually use this as a MIDI device for a PC or a Mac based setup as well, which really unlocks some potential. Okay, so now I'm doing things digitally. Uh, this is Amplitude 5 and I'm going straight in with the DI, but I've also got the Futurist connected. Now the Futurist is going in Reaper to its own channel, uh, but then is being forwarded on to Amplitude, uh, which is a routing thing. I've got Reaper tutorials if you want to learn how to do that. But that means that if I change presets on here, this changes everything completely. So that was a PC program change. Now the other thing that you can do that I did is I've added my expression pedal. So if I go into the futurist here, uh, I click on my uh, top left, which I called Warmony for war and harmony. I can go firstly into the global options, make sure that the control jack is set to expression and calibrate it. So once I've set that, I can now rock my pedal backwards and forwards a little bit then hit enter and that should now work properly. Now, aside from that, if I go into my patch messages for this particular button and go over to control at jack, which has changed to expression, I can choose MIDI channel one, which is what I've got Amplitude set to right now. And I've chosen CC 47. It's just a, a nice number that I like. It means nothing really. Uh, but it's not one of the kind of danger zone CCs. A few of them like uh, CC7, for example, globally just means volume. Quite a lot of the ones higher up in the number scale don't necessarily have to be tied to certain things. So yeah, I went for 47 and now I can clear that out. And so we've got this wah. Now if I play, I can use the mouse. <laughs> But that's not very good if I'm trying to use uh, both hands. So what I can do to make things really quick, especially in Amplitude, is I can go to right click on it and go assign MIDI, wah. It's already assigned, so uh, for the purposes of this video, I'll go to assign MIDI, wah, learn, wah. And that says it's waiting for MIDI input. So if I rock the expression pedal, there we go. Now that I'm rocking the expression backwards and forwards, you can see the wah pedals moving on the screen. And if I play that, it's very, very responsive because that's going straight from the expression pedal through MIDI. I'm running quite a low latency setup anyway, but between them, that's really usable. And it's not just for wire and things like uh, uh, the whammy as well. You can also do things like if I change this to a volume, <laughs> and then make sure that this is assigned, volume learn, there we go. I can use that a few ways. I can use it to either back off if I've got loads of drive, like if I turn these two pedals on. I can do something else. I can add in a delay. And if I add in a delay with the volume before it, what do you get? You get swells. So there you go. Uh, so this can be used as a USB controller device as well. 
really, really useful tool. Now let's look at the control software so I don't have to press these buttons anymore. There we go, this is the Matthews Effects Editor. And the first thing I'm going to want to do out of all of this is look on the right hand side and click Load from Futurist, because that does exactly what it says. And that takes everything we've done, brings it out into here. So we can see on the left, we've got a load of banks which have seven different buttons. Even though there are only four on here, we can add that extra uh, extender thing that's got three more buttons on it. So what we can do here is go to our preset editor. So if I just double click on a preset, that brings that up in the preset editor. Now you can see there's bank select, so we can choose which bank, we can choose which preset we're on, but we've already gone to bank one, preset one. We can change the name here, much quicker than trying to click and click and click it out on there, so that's much faster. We can give it a description as well, so we know what the preset is supposed to do when we go back to the editor again. Now, uh, there are 16 little tabs here, so you can have up to 16 things happen when you hit that button. Uh, so this is going back to what we did before. Uh, there's manual, there's custom, if you've programmed customs, if you remember that little R thing we did earlier, that's there now. Uh, there's manual where you add in what MIDI channel with your mouse wheel, there's all 16 there. Uh, you can choose whether it's CC, PC, note on, note off. And you put all that in. And there's also smart, which I'll come to in a minute. Uh, you can turn on the expression pedal, uh, say which channel you want that to go out on and what CC number. Uh, the utility, which we use for both tap tempo and amp switching is all changeable here. There's also a MIDI clock, which if you've got anything that runs on a MIDI clock, you can synchronize it all really nice. When you're done, you hit update on your thing uh, and you can save it to a file right there. So I've called it test one just because we're testing this out. If I hit audition, that will then file that over without it being saved to a particular preset. So we can then test out whether that did what we thought it was supposed to do, whether the expression pedal works how we expected it to, whether the uh, jack, whether the tap tempo jack did what we expected. When we're happy with all that, we go back to the preset organizer, make sure it's all saved, save our workspace and save it to the futurist. And that will save everything we've done over to there. There's also the smart creators. So we can add different brands in, so you can add in, with the pedal board creator, you can have different channels and you can name them. So I would rename channel number one, the Rev. Channel number two would be my uh, Cog pedal board. Then I could have something like, you know, DD200, Strymon, whatever takes MIDI, you can name all the channels there so that you then, I'll save the workspace, so you know where, exactly where you're sending these to. And your custom MIDI messages are there so that if you know exactly uh, which uh, MIDI unit you'll be sending to quite often, exactly which uh, signal, you add it all in there, you save your customs and that saves you time. And then from there you can add in all sorts of stuff. There's a cloud button. So there's Chase Bliss, Meris, Seller, Strymon. Let's hit OK to bring Strymon in. Ooh, so there's already the big sky in the timeline and there's a couple of uh, options in here already. That's really nice that these are already in here. Uh, that will save me a lot of time. Um, I would imagine this cloud stuff is gonna grow over time so that there'll be a lot more um, options in here, which means if you've got something like, say, a Strymon timeline, which has a lot of controls, I'm not now searching for the manual for this. They're all there. I can just add each one of these in as a control function and that's gonna save me a ton of time. I can also merge from file if someone sent me a file of um, that's already been made. If there's a community that's doing that, that's gonna save a lot of time too. There's also all your global settings here which are laid out in a, a user-friendly way. Of course, it's a little less user-friendly on the screen because you've got two lines of text on a tiny little pedal, but that's size convenience over this so I can change everything, including updating the firmware. When I got this, it was at 1.02. I updated to 1.05. Apparently there were a couple of little tweaks that made things more stable and just generally better. So that is the Futurists PC and Mac app. And we're gonna see more updates to this in the future. It's gonna be really cool.
So back to me in the studio. This thing does even more as well, but at this point, I'm just gonna say, look at the manual for the really, really advanced stuff and the fine like little global options, all the kind of stuff you can do that's extra. This thing is incredibly powerful for such a tiny size. And so I am gonna be using this a lot. Thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed this. Like, share, subscribe, all that kind of good stuff. You know what that's about. Uh, thanks to Matthews Effects for sponsoring this video. And I uh, hope if you watch this to get the most out of your futurist that it's helped you. So thanks everybody for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Ta-ta for now. Hey everyone, that might be the end of the video, but if you fancy carrying on this conversation, we have a Discord server, link is in the description. We're also on Patreon, which is something you can really help us with. We also are on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Hop Pole Studios. See you there.